All right, so um, I'm sharing the screen and I'm going to go right over here and I'll probably go back and forth as uh, I hear it ding, people joining. Everybody should be able to hear me. Um, what we'll do is at the end, this will be about a 30 to 40 minute training at the end. You can either text me or put on the chat any questions you have. So um, again, this is more or less, this is going to be the beginning stages of when we have somebody that we work with. Um, so the way it always plays out in the beginning is the phone rings. And uh, if you've been in any of my classes or you just know me, I always try to set the appointment. So whether it's forewarn, whether it's Zillow, whether it's your best friend who's calling you, your dad to list this house, uh, I always go, uh, I'll, number one, I pick my phone up almost all the time. And I would just go, hi, this is Doug Smith with DHS Realty. Uh, yeah, my name is Jody. I was interested in um, looking at a house tonight. Absolutely. Uh, what's the address? 123 Easy Street. Absolutely. What time do you want to look at it, Jody? Oh, I was another thing about five o'clock. Sure. Um, I tell you what, have you uh, ever met with a lender before? No, I haven't. I uh, kind of want an idea of what, what I need to do, what steps, you know, what's the right steps. And you'll hear buyers say that. And of course, I would put Jody on speakerphone and I'd go ahead and go in my notes on my iPhone and send her Brooks Kelly. Um, Brooks has like 10 lenders at work for him. So you're really given more than one lender when you give his name out. Um, but again, you don't have to use Brooks, but you need to have some lenders that are reputable and that answer the phone on weekends and work basically the same hours that I do, I would think, because you're going to have a buyer making an offer late at night um, or on a Saturday or Sunday, and you need to have a, bro a, a lender that's available just like you need a broker that's available to help you. So I would send her uh, three uh, lenders by putting in our speakerphone. And then I would basically start a relationship with her on the phone. Just go, um, so are you in a month to month now, Jody, or, or what's your story? And I'm usually just quiet and let her talk and I'm listening. She goes, oh, I'm month to month. And, um, you know, this will be our first house. And so uh, I'll say, well, I co cool. I will uh, see you tonight at 5 p.m. And um, hey, by the way, give me your agent's name so I can protect them in case you like the house tonight. Uh, I don't want to take money from your friend. Oh, I don't have a realtor, Doug. Okay, I'll see you tonight. And again, that's always what I do whenever I get a phone call for any kind of lead, even if it's to, I mean, as soon as somebody says, uh, yeah, I got your name from somebody and want to see if you could um, help me sell my house. Yeah, when do you want to meet? That, that's just always the first thing that comes out of my, my mouth. When do you want to meet? Absolutely. When do you want to look at it? Oh, sure. Uh, tomorrow? Yeah, five or six. You don't open-ended. Like if, if you say tomorrow and they say yes, then don't say, well, what time is good for you? Because they could lollygag around. So make it specific, you know, hey, tomorrow. Oh, okay. Five or morning or afternoon. Uh, morning be great. 10 or 11. Oh, 11. All right. Well, I'll see you tomorrow at 11 and boom, that's the whole goal. Um, but again, what I always like is when it's a buyer or a tenant at the very end, right before Jody gets off the phone with me, if Jody's my tenant or my buyer, I go, hey, Jody, one more thing real quick, and I'll let you go. Hey, give me your realtor's name so I can protect them in case you like the house tonight. I want to make sure I'm not taking money from your realtor. Oh, I don't have a realtor. And again, if they say they do have a realtor, that's when you say, well, where's your realtor at? And, oh, my realtor's in Cabo. Well, you need to wait for them to get back from Cabo, and they can show you that house. And that's really the way I've always done my real estate. Um, you know, that way you vet people. And when you vet people, uh, it makes your life a lot easier. So um, that's always going to be the first the first step always is set the appointment, uh, have a little rapport building. And then at the very end, say, oh, by the way, give me your realtor's name so I can sign them in. I want to make sure I don't uh, take a commission from your your realtor. Oh, I don't have a realtor. All right. See you tonight. Then I get off the phone and I immediately go into my Haystack app. And this is my business card. So I like this. I don't do the electronic business card with Jenny. Uh, only because I like this and I do it on my phone and I'm really never on my laptop like I am tonight. So I have a protocol, almost like a procedure that I do every time somebody gets off the phone with me. I always go in and send them my Haystack card and you can always text me later tonight and I'll send you my Haystack card. And when you open it, it says, do you want to start your own? And you put yes and you can basically create your own. I just threw in this available till midnight 
Um, and you know, the logo, all that, we have all these logos on back agent under office and documents. I think we have 50 logos so you can make your business card. So I'm obviously going to send that to them. Um, and then I'm going to go to my YouTube page and I have a video that's basically who's Doug Smith and why would you want to use Doug as your realtor? And I send that to them and I do it right off my phone. I have the YouTube app. So I always send my business card and then I send a YouTube video. It's, a, it's me talking, which I'm a big advocate of. And it's just like, hey, my name's Doug. I appreciate you reaching out to me. Um, love to be your agent and be your advocate. Here's some of the things that I can do for you. And then boom, about two minutes to three minutes. And you can scroll down when you look at this uh, YouTube site, DHS Realty, and you can see a few videos, uh, why pick an eight, why pick, you know, our agents or why pick an agent. I've got like 400 videos. So you'll find a few of them that are, that I sometimes send out to buyers and tenants. So the next thing I'm going to do is if I'm meeting Jody. Uh, and I don't know anything other than her first name and her cell phone. I'm going to go to our app and the app is, um, I'm going to uh, log in real quick and show y'all, but this is forewarn and, uh, forewarn is, uh, part of your, your, uh, onboarding. I, uh, I do that. You, I send you four emails when you get onboarded and, um, this one is Forewarn. It's an app where you can look up somebody's phone number and it'll tell you their criminal history. And the reason why that's important is because sometimes you're going to meet somebody and all you have is their first name and their cell phone. So this, uh, this feature is $10 per agent per month, but I cover it and we're at 180 agents. So, you know, it's not something that's inexpensive, but I want to make sure that I can go to bed at night knowing that Obviously, I sometimes can't be with you if you go show, but I've given you a tool that you should utilize. And uh, it's part of everybody's onboarding. So when you log into the app, which would be on your phone, you just put in your client's phone number. And I'm going to put my phone number in just to show you. Um, so this is the third thing I do. So I get off the phone after setting the appointment. I send my business card. I send a YouTube video. Why pick Doug as your agent? And then I go to full warn just to make sure I'm not showing a serial killer. And I'm going to type in the person's phone number. So let's say that I was calling Jody to show her, or I wanted Jody to show me a home. She wanted to log in and see if Doug's a serial killer. So she puts my phone number and hits search. And it's going to pull up anything tied to my phone number. So that's my wife and that's me. That's the address that my dad had like 20 years ago. This is our current address. That's my current age and that's my wife's current age. If you click on me, which you'll be able to do, you'll see that it's got all my phone records. And what's crazy is I looked at this the other day and it goes back to when I was in college. Okay. And then when you go to the top and you hit back, you can go to all the addresses. And again, it's pretty thorough. Uh, this goes all the way back to when I was in college. So that's Elliot. That's a dorm. I was an RA in. So, I mean, those are addresses from like literally 40 years ago. So that's pretty cool. Um, if you go back up, you hit the back button. And I know all y'all are wanting me to click on the criminal infraction to see uh, what I did wrong. Uh, it's a speeding ticket that was in California. Um, and it's somewhere it says that. So um, I wasn't even in California at the time. So, it, you know, because Doug Smith is pretty much a common name, this isn't always accurate, but when it says like felony convictions last night or last week or a year ago, and there's multiple, you know, it's probably a good idea to go ahead and, you know, tell these people that you're going to pass because um, you just never know. And uh, again, um, on the app, it says San Diego and I wasn't even there. All right. So now after we have sent the business card, we've sent a YouTube video, I'll probably even live, leave a video and uh, a video message for Jody and just say, Hey Jody, I just got off the phone with you. I see my business card and a little YouTube video. Can't wait to see you tonight. I probably won't say can't wait to see you tonight, but look forward to seeing you tonight. And uh, I think I'm going to make appointments for a few other homes and I'll always be able to cancel them if you don't want to look at them, but at least we'll have them available and we could probably knock out three or four homes tonight. All right. So then I'm going to go into the MLS. All right. And uh, the MLS is always going to be this website, matrix.netris.net. 
And when you log in to MLS, you're going to have a username and a password. Your username is your license with a zero and your password is your own. So every time you log in, you'll usually get about 12 boxes, about six and six. And you always want to click this box here in the left matrix Netris. When you click it, it takes you into our MLS. And this is how almost all y'all's home screen should look because I've kind of cleaned it up to where when we train, you know what we're looking at and we're all using the same features. So right now, let's say that Jody had wanted me to look up an address and wanted to, me to show her a house at 8005 Fall Meadow. This section right here in the middle is pretty dummy proof because um, if, uh, if you know it's 8005 and Fall Meadow, if you don't know if Meadow is a compound word or not, all you have to do is put fall and as soon as you hit search, it'll pull up all the homes back to 2003 that start with 8,005 in a fall. So I think that's pretty cool. Uh, sometimes you'll have an address like um, County Road 0000. So if you did that and somebody said, yeah, I want to know about 000, County Road 0000, you go 0000 and just put a C and hit enter. And it'll pull up everything since 2003 with zero zeros and a county wrote with a C. So then you can kind of scroll down and find the house that they're talking about. So uh, hold on, let me add, let me add this person in real quick. Okay, so, um, so this dashboard, uh, it, this, is, this is the gold right here, okay? This is how you can always find a house. Uh, I used to live at 2207 Dallas Drive in Carrollton. So, Let's say I didn't know the address, but I just said, hey, Jody, can you pull up a house on Dallas Drive in Carrollton? She just types in here, D-A-L. She could go down to city and she could type in Carrollton. She could hit search. It's going to pull up every home with D-A-L in it. So you can look at these first you know, couple homes here. It says 2224 Dallas, 2224, 2230, all right? You keep scrolling down and eventually she would find 2207 Dallas Drive. And that's a home that I sold back in um, like 2000, year 2000, I think, uh, or maybe even earlier than that. So the MLS keeps properties all the way back to 2003, all right? So uh, let's say that the property was not available that Jody called on. And let's say that it was 2224 Dallas Drive. So you click on it right here. And this is called the MLS report. It's the agent full report. It's the most data. Okay. So right there, you see 2224 Dallas Drive. You see Carrollton. It's 265. You scroll down. You see that the home closed or list date was 2018. And uh, so let's just say that this home is no longer available. So instead, you want to do a home search because right now, Jody thinks you're going to meet her at 2224 Dallas, but it's not available. You don't need to call her back yet to tell her it's not available. First, you need to send her a search. So whenever we're at this page, which is the dashboard, the, the site, that the, the tab part that you always want to learn is right here. So you hover over search and go residential quick. And this is the MLS. And when you hit on quick, you're going to see that you're sending active homes. Over here at price, you go 0 300. Down here at city, you type in Carrollton. And maybe the square footage, you go 1,500 and a plus sign. And you can see that in Carrollton right now, under 300 with 1,500 square foot plus with the master down, there's only two homes. So if I uncheck mark master down, there's five homes. So I'm going to send these homes to Jody. Because I'm meeting her tonight at a home that she thinks we're meeting at, but it's not available. So I need to send these homes. They're active. So I hit results, save auto email, just like this. Results, save, new auto email. Results, save, new auto email. Results, save, new auto email. And then I got to create a client. So I need to put in Jody's name. And then you got to put in her email. And then you hit save. Now, when you hit save, you've got her now in this drop down. So you'll not ever have to put her in as a new contact ever again. 
she'll be in this drop down that you can always select from. Now all you do is go down here to the subject line and just put homes and scroll down to the bottom. When you hit save, you just emailed it to her. I always like to go up here to ASAP before I hit save, because now when I hit save, if ASAP is marked, that means that after I send this search to Jody in the next second, if an agent inputs a listing, Jody's going to get it no matter what time of day it is. And every time she gets that email, it's got my picture. Like I'm the listing agent, even though I'm not. So again, always hit ASAP and then hit save and you just emailed her. So then you would text Jody. Hey, Jody, it's Doug. Uh, hey, I'm looking forward to seeing you tonight at six. Uh, that home is no longer available, but I just sent you five properties. Let me know if you want to look at one of them. And I'd be, you know, I already have my time set up aside for you tonight. We could probably knock out all five of these homes in about you know, an hour and a half if you wanted to look at all five of these homes. But I just sent it to you. If you'll just confirm you got it and let me know, I greatly appreciate it. And I look forward to meeting you. Get off the phone. And if she opens the search, when you log back into MLS, her name's going to be right there. It'll say Jody Gibbs. If she favorited a home right there, there'll be a heart and you can click on it and it'll pull up the house she favorited. So again, that's pretty cool feature. Um, and it started right here, sending a search. So that's residential quick. And of course the other buyer tenant we're working with is the tenant. So that's residential. Uh, when you hover over search and go residential quick, that's a home search. When you hover over search and go residential lease, that's a lease search. And on this, it's very similar. I have condos and houses marked. So you might just mark one, you know, just houses. This is if Jody wanted at least something zero to 2,500. And she wanted Rowlett and Plano. There's 49 homes. That's probably too many. So then I would ask her how many bedrooms she wants. She wants four plus. Now there's 14. She wants a 2,000 square foot minimum. There's 10. That's perfect. So again, what am I going to do? Results, save, new auto email. Results, save, new auto email. Results, save, new auto email. Now, let's say that Jody is in my drop down. I just click on the drop down and I look for her. Oh, there she is. And I put in this subject line, lease homes. So she'll know the difference. Scroll down. Before I hit save, I hit ASAP. Then I hit save and I just emailed her. Okay. Uh, you're going to always text the buyer or the tenant to make sure they got the list of properties. That's being proactive. Um, I've set your MLS up to where when a buyer favorites a home, you get a text message. And where that's located, in case you ever want to know, is right here. If you click on my matrix and we get back to the dashboard, if you hover over my matrix and go to summary, and then you hit settings, and then you hit portal notifications, this is where I've asked for your phone number and your phone provider. And usually you sent me a four digit code. I plug it in here and I usually for new people, I mark these three. And that means that anytime someone visits a portal, you'll get a text message. Anytime someone favorites a home, you'll get a text message. Anytime somebody visits a portal for the first time, you'll get a text message. And that's just a super proactive way to keep ahead of things. And, uh, and then I hit save and boom, it's in there forever. So portal notifications, see it's already marked. All right. So that's going to be under my matrix and summary. I do that for you guys. <clears throat> Let's say that uh, you won't go to school with somebody and you want to look them up and find out where they're at. If you hover over search and go to agent, you can look up their last name. So I knew a guy named um, Tamer. And I think that was his first name because he used to tell me he was the lion tamer. When I interviewed him once, he said he was going to sell 50 homes this first year. I was like, all righty. So right there, I put Tamer and there's one match. So I click on it. And boom, Tamer, she high. Okay. Uh, you hit the back button. So search is a way to find agents. If you ever want to look up somebody you might've gone to school with. Um, and again, that's residential homes. That's residential leases. And a lot of times you have somebody that wants to look at multifamily. So you go to search multifamily quick. 
And right down here, you have your options. Apartment, fourplex, full duplex, multi-single units, or triplex. So let's see how many full duplexes there are. Uh, zero to half a million. And we'll pick three cities. Let's go McKinney, Allen, Plano. Two. So that's crazy. Two full duplexes. So let's say that you wanted to send those to Jody. What would we do? Results save new auto email. Results save new auto email. Again, either a new client or they're in the drop down. Type something in the subject line. Scroll to the bottom. Hit ASAP before you hit save and then verify they got the email. All right. So that's, that's, that's the initial information that you're going to, you know, glean when you're on the phone. And then obviously I'm a big believer in getting places early. Um, I went to the gun thing last night. I got there like 40 minutes early, but I always like to be early rather than ever have a chance of being late. So I would get to a house early, be out there probably about 20 minutes early. I'm going to have my home buyer packet car pulls up behind me. I've never met Jody in my life. Uh, she probably knows me a little cause I've sent her video messages and the funny thing is she'll probably send me a video message because people do that when you send them a video message. So you kind of get an idea of what they're going to look like. So she pulls up behind me. Maybe she told me that she's in a car that I have see and I've told her I'm in a Tahoe. So I get out. I have my home buyer packet rolled up and I walk up to her. I'm like, hey, are you Jody? Yeah. Oh, I'm Doug. It's good to put a face to a phone call. Uh, shake her hand or elbow fist bump or whatever. Uh, mask or no mask depends on what Jody wants. And then I'm going to hand her my home buyer packet and go, hey, this is just a little packet on myself. It's just some propaganda. It's got my resume references. But there is a form in there I have to give to a buyer on my first contact due to Texas law. So it's in there. I just want to let you know, I, you know, it's got it's got some you know resume and references in it. Let's go take a look at the house. So as we're walking up to the house, I'd probably just ask her, um, hey, uh, you from around here? Uh, oh, no, I live here, there. And, you know, uh, maybe she's military. Uh, as you're walking up to the front door, one thing that you can always talk about is where the sun sets and find out if the sun sets in the backyard well before you walk up to the house. So if the backyard has an east, a southeast or a northeast exposure, it's always a good idea as you're opening the door to look at Jody and go, hey, just so you know, we have a lot of summer heat in the summer. And if we can get the patio on the east side or southeast or northeast, there's going to actually be a little bit of a breeze in the backyard with a patio that has a southeast east or northeast you know direction and jody will probably go wow i've never heard that before uh then when you walk in the house you know most people know a good house from a bad house and if you walk in the house i mean i've walked in a house before say yeah this is nice i mean, i'm surprised it's still available and then i've walked in a house before that you know said this is awful like let's leave so you know that's what you're you're probably that's what a buyer wants is an opinionated realtor um while you're in the house when you open up the garage you can always look at the sprinkler or if you don't have a sprinkler, you can either way, you can say, oh, they got a sprinkler. And Jody goes, oh, I don't like doing large yard work. And that's where you go. Yeah, I don't either. But the sprinkler is for watering the foundation to keep it moist so that the house, when it moves, it moves together. Because we just have clay here in the soil and our houses just float on soil that's got clay in it. And our houses move. We just want them to move together. So we water our foundation about every 15 minutes yeah, I mean, once a, once every third day for 15 minutes and once a week in the winter, uh, usually in the evening when the sun goes down. And uh, if you do that regularly and you buy a house with a backyard facing east, southeast or northeast, uh, you're probably going to be in pretty good shape on resale. Now, if you're in the house and again, what you're trying to do is establish a rapport that you're different and, you know, make no mistake, a buyer, they don't know what to expect when they meet a realtor. It's either going to be someone they enjoy or somebody that's a car salesman. So if it's a two story, like at my house, I've got a bedroom down. And when I'm with a buyer, I'd ask Jody, like, hey, you got kiddos? And Jody would say, yeah. I was like, oh, would you close their door for fire safety? And she goes, yeah, they think there's a boogeyman. So we don't close the doors all the time. And I'll say, well, it's a good idea to, you know, teach your kids to close a door. I used to be a fireman. Uh, you can say yourself, like, I know a fireman that always told me that, we should close our doors for fire safety because if a fire ever broke out at night, a door that's closed, a fire needs oxygen to breathe and the fire wouldn't go through the underbelly of the door, but it would go right through the door if the door was open. And so usually the buyer go, oh, I never thought about that. Well, on a two story, 
if you talk them in to closing their kids' bedroom doors, if you locate the thermostat upstairs and it's in the hallway, what that effectively means, if the master's down, that when you turn on the heat downstairs, it's going to rise the heat and it's going to read the thermostat upstairs, always too hot to turn on in the winter. So in the hallway, it's going to be like the Caribbean. But when you open up the kiddo's bedroom door in the morning to wish them good morning, they're going to be freezing and you'll be breathing condensation when you say good morning. So what you can do is talk to them about that thermostat and explain how for about a hundred bucks, a repair guy can move that thermostat inside the door a bedroom. And then when you close the door, it's only reading the temperature in that bedroom. So again, those are three things that I tell every buyer when I meet them. And I know that, you know, it's easy when you see me teaching or, you know, like, oh, Doug's got a lot of knowledge. I, I mean, I, I do have experience, but you could be 18 years old and you could learn those three things I just said. And when you lead with abundance at the front door, before you've ever opened the door, you're talking about the backyard and what it, what it, what it, uh, what, what exposure it has to the sun. Uh, when you go in the garage and you're talking about a sprinkler, that's the farthest thing from a buyer's mind. And what you're showing is that you're setting yourself apart from the other realtors in DFW. And if you take some time to make up your little home buyer packet, um, and again, I mean, on zip forms, uh, you can go in the right corner and hit the forms tab and select the library that's all. And you could just type in home. And there's like 20 pages that you could print to make a home buyer packet. Throw in your resume, the IBS, maybe a buyer rep agreement, templated where it only says your name goes here in paragraph one. And you've got all the makings for a high percentage of getting every buyer you ever meet. Because I can tell you with almost certainty that about 90% of the realtors that work with buyers and, and, and tenants showing a house don't talk about the sun setting. Don't talk about watering their foundation. Don't explain anything about a thermostat on a two-story with a master down and how it's going to make their kids' bedrooms cold if the thermostat's in the hallway. And <clears throat> what you do is you practice on your, your, your family. You, I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with pulling up in front of your house and having somebody pull up behind you and you're showing the house. And you just role play. You get out, you shake your friend's hand, go, hey, I'm, I'm Jasmine. How you doing? I'm with DHS Realty. Oh, good. I'm Doug. Oh, well, come on. Let's take a look at this house. Hey, uh, Doug, here's a little packet on myself. And um, it's just got some propaganda, my resume and references. Um, but, you know, this backyard faces uh, due, due east. Uh, that's really good in the summer. It'd be a lot of shade in the backyard because the house is going to shade the backyard. Oh, I never heard that before, Jasmine. Oh, really? Are you from here, Doug? No, I'm from California. Oh, California. Oh, yeah, that's a state that everybody loves the sun, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, I love California. Yeah, I lived in San Diego. My backyard faced the ocean. Oh, so your backyard faced west. Oh, yeah, because I like watching the sunset. Well, there's a breeze too, right? Oh, yeah, there's a breeze because there's a friggin' ocean underneath the sea. I mean, underneath the sun when it sets. In Texas, we don't have an ocean. It's friggin' hot. So that's why for the five months out of the year, when you go to list a buyer's house that you help them with, they're going to remember that. I've had multiple buyers tell me, you're the one that talked about the sun in the backyard. And I can't tell you how much we've enjoyed that backyard. We got friends. We don't ever go across the street because their backyard faces due west. They're never in the backyard. They always want to come over to our house because our backyard faces due east and it's got shade every evening. So, I mean, those are the types of things that during this training, when I'm talking about how to differentiate yourself, just to recap, you're going to send them a business card. That's on Haystack. You can text me later and I'll send you mine. It'll ask you if you want to start your own. You make a YouTube video on yourself. I would actually recommend you make a YouTube page. I've got 400 plus videos on this page. You look them up on Forewarn, and that's the app where I offer that to you all for free. And you can always check out who you're about to meet and see what their criminal activity is. And then you go on the MLS and you do a search. And when you do the search, hopefully the home that they want is available. But what I would do is I would not only send them that home, but I would send them every other home that's in the area and you don't even have to tell them you made appointments for the other ones. That would be something that's super cool. When Jasmine met me at the house and she's like, Hey, I don't know how much time you got, Doug, but there's two other houses in the neighborhood and I made appointments for them. If you want to knock them out while we're here. Yeah, that'd be great. Cause um, I'm working all day tomorrow. Um, you know, and, and all Jasmine gets is more opportunity to sell herself to me that she's the realtor that I need to work with. Once I leave the buyer, probably about an hour later, I send them a, a video message. 
Hey, Jody, it was good meeting you tonight. I just want to let you know that uh, I'm here for you. I'm here for the long haul. And I'm with a firm with over 100 years experience. And uh, we have almost every designation you could ever want. And I just want to let you know that I want all your real estate needs and I want to be your advocate. And I'll look forward to hearing back from you. And, you know, if you want to look at any other homes this weekend, just text me or email me and I'll get back with you real quick. Um, so that's, you know, that's basically how you do it. Um, the last thing I'm going to do for about 10 minutes is um, how you would input a listing. And again, MLS, that's what this is. So for those that might have joined a little late, MLS is matrix.netris.net. Matrix.netris.net. When you click it, it will go to this site. And we already know that this is what we're going to use for all searches. That's for residential properties. That's for multifamily. That's for lots and acreage. And that's for leases. But you're also going to get sellers where you need to input a listing. And so after you go meet them and you have the IBS, the listing agreement, the seller's disclosure, then you have to input it in the MLS. And basically what you do is you go to input. Just think about it. I've got to input it in the MLS. So go to input. When you click on input, it's going to say listing, add new, and you're going to click add new. And then you're going to pick whether it's residential, multifamily, lots and acreage, commercial or lease. And it's going to be, let's just act like we're listing my house. You click residential. Then it's going to say, how do you want to complete it? And almost 99% of the time, you're going to click fill from the realist tax. That's filling it from the tax roll. So you click on it. And then you got to get a little creative. Number one, you got to pick the county. So the county is Colin. Be nice if I knew how to type. And then over here, you go to street name. And first, you put in the number. And th this is where you might have to use a little bit of creativity. But I'm going to first try just the whole word. So 8005 Fall Meadow. I'm going to hit search. And it pulls up my house. All I do is click fill. And now these are all the tabs I've got to go from left to right. And when I get to status, the home is active. So what I always do is I skip general and I just go straight to status. And I pick active and then I just hit submit. And what it does is it tells you from left to right, everything you've got to fill out and you've got to make that red exclamation mark go bye-bye. So you just start left to right. And you're like, oh, okay, let's see. What kind of listing is this? Everything yellow needs to be filled out. And you just go down and you have you know, exclusive right to sell. Okay, it's a single detached. Uh, you scroll down here. Usually it's a traditional home. Construction status, it's pre-owned. List price, it's going to be 500. List date, it's going to be tonight. End date, I usually pick four months out. Year built is already pre-filled. Square footage is pre-filled. Square footage source, it's the tax roll. You scroll down. Everything yellow has to be filled out. It's not going to be subdivided. There's no uh, multi-parcel. It's a subdivision. What kind of uh, construction is it? It's brick. You scroll down. It already has all this pre-filled. You got to know the school districts. And that's why it's the best to uh, ask the seller while you're at the house what the current school district is and what the current schools are. Because in Plano, if I hit elementary, there's a lot. And I don't want to be guessing. When I hit middle, there's a lot. I don't want to be guessing. When I pick high school, there's a lot. I don't want to be guessing. Okay? So, again, uh, after you finish filling that out, you hit submit. And that red exclamation mark goes away. And then you go to rooms. And you fill this out. And then you go to features. And then you go to lots and lots and utility. And then you go to financial information. And then you go to showing information. And then you go to remarks. And once all those don't have a red exclamation mark, you'll hit status. You'll hit submit. And you, the next screen, you'll get an MLS number. And that means you just successfully put it in the MLS. Uh, now, I'm available to help through that because I know I go quick. That's why it's recorded. And I like to keep it about 40 minutes on training so that you all have, you know, the uh, attention span to go back and I don't, you know, get to where I'm beating y'all down with training with so long. It's, it's not productive. Uh, so that's, you know, that's, that's how, that's how you input a listing really quick. Now, obviously I would help you with it and I help agents every day. So um, that's pretty much the training uh, for tonight.
and uh, I'm going to post it on uh, group me. So uh, everybody will have it. And it'll also go on my YouTube site first. And um, 